C. I answer quite a lot of questions on Quora for entrepreneurs, for late stage entrepreneurs, especially who have to change, you know, from founder to leader, because that's my focus. And in these questions, there are a lot of items on management and leaders that uh, come up. And lately, there was the question about the 10 biggest entre entrepreneur mistakes. So I decided to make two videos about it. You have seen part one, the first five. This video is about the next five mistakes that you as an entrepreneur, you have to avoid. Hey, my name is Armin L. Rao. I'm the founder of L. and Rao, the Entrepreneur's Entrepreneur, and I'd like to help you to become a great leader. I've been a coach, entrepreneur and leader for more than 25 years, and I'd like to share my experience with you in this channel. So if you would like to have more leadership insights for entrepreneurs from me, please click on the red button underneath this video to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to switch on the bell so that you are always informed about new content. Now we're going to the second five of the top 10. So we're starting with entrepreneur mistake number six, and that is not having enough technical background. You would be surprised how many entrepreneurs just found something and they don't have the clear understanding of what they are doing. They think that, for example, with some business acumen and some sales talent, they can actually do anything. I'm completely against it. I was invested in a company many, many years ago. It was actually the first investment that I made where uh, the <clears throat> bosses didn't have enough technical background to actually ascertain what the technology would mean how complex it would be and how to apply it correctly. That led to a lot of trial and error, to a lot of BS, I would say, in the communication with the market and the shareholders. I was one of the people who believed the BS, lost uh, quite some money on it, but also learned from it that you should never invest in companies where you don't see the technical know-how uh, with the founders. So. If you don't have the technical know-how, look, look for something that you really understand. Uh, and by that, avoid entrepreneur mistake number six. Entrepreneur mistake number seven is to avoid the power of big partners. Now, sometimes when you are building a startup, <clears throat> you will have to rely on large partners who cover part of the technology or the services that you you need but would, which would probably or possibly be too expensive for you to build up on your own. I, want, I once was invested a few years ago in a mobile phone company who used the network of a larger company to act as a so-called mobile virtual network operator. So they used the spare capacity and offered their services completely for free. And the business model was to make money through advertising. Quite interesting. They had the one of the world, world's most renowned mobile advertising agencies on board as a partner and they also had a very, very solid partner in the telecoms network. Then all of a sudden something went wrong and the big network partner would just pull the plug on them from one day to the other. Can you believe that? And you know what? The company went bust immediately. It went out of business one, from one day to the other. Never seen that before. I was invested. Again, a few shackles gone. But what can you do? If you don't invest, you can't lose, obviously. And uh, that is one example. The other example is I was uh, a board member of a technology company who produ produced software. And we went into a partnership. We were just 200 people. And we went into a partnership with a large SIM card producer. And this SIM card producer obviously had a lot of business with SIM cards and their salespeople, they were concentrated on that and their bonuses also depended on selling a lot of SIM cards. What my company actually tried was to convince the larger partner to also sell our software because the CEOs, my boss and the CEO of the other company, they thought that might be a good idea. Didn't work obviously because it is very, very important. It is very, very difficult, you know, to steer the course of a big uh, big ship with, with 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 a little boat. So that was 
impossible. So these two stories, these two, two anecdotes show really beware of bigger partners. I would even say if you can avoid it, don't do it. Entrepreneur mistake number eight is actually no risk management, no contingency plans. Now, I know we are all very excited about our ideas. We're working a lot. We put a lot of energy into it. And we always think as entrepreneurs, we tend to think in terms of opportunity. I would really like to invite you to also take the flip side into account, to always think about what risks am I taking and to produce a so-called risk register, which is a table with your risks, the probability of these risks being materialized, the potential damage if they are materialized, and then to, to make a calculation on your exposure. And last but not least, to make a mitigation plan on how to treat these risks. Risks actually, what, you can, what can you do with risks? You can either eliminate them if they can be eliminated. You can, one example of eliminating them, apart from just, you know, doing something about it would be uh, taking an insurance if you if you accept them you can accept them even without assurance or you can reduce them these are the four options that you have uh, for treating risks but do take risks into account they are an important part of your business and don't only think opportunity so entrepreneur mistake number eight no risk management and or contingency plan Entrepreneur mistake number nine is underestimating market dynamics, especially the market dynamics that are caused by your competitors. I was invested in one company, another company, yeah. I've been invested in five companies so far. Yeah, as I said before, uh, three of them went bust. So still three down, two to go. I hope that they are going to be successful. And in this, company went into a market where there were very, very established players with a lot of power. Now, you might say now, yes, but that's what we entrepreneurs are for. That's, that's true. And I don't say don't go into a market where there is a lot of power. Otherwise, Tesla would probably not have gone into the automotive market. But don't forget, they also created a new ca category, electrical uh, automo automobiles, which is completely different from the classical ones. So if you're going into these markets, I would suggest to produce a new category. But in this example that I was just talking about, there was the real great power of existing market players where, for example, the clients of the market players, they would get kickbacks if they gave the order to certain established players in the market. And the company that I was invested in just could not change the rules of the game because they were far too small, did not have the financial means, did not have the resources. So the question here is also in order to, first of all, to understand these market dynamics, the strength of the competitors, and secondly, to actually create this new category where this power of the comp competition is irrelevant. And here's entrepreneur mistake number 10 that I'd like to share with you. And that is about underestimating overheads, not controlling them enough and underestimating them, not being lean enough. The doctor, the Swiss doctor of the 15th century called Paracelsus said, the death is in the gut. So what he meant is you have to take care of your gut. And if you take good care of your gut, you will be healthy and you will live long. The thing now is, in a company, the death is in the SGNA, in the sales, general and administration. And that is where you have to put your control. Keep it as lean as possible. Watch the bottom line. Look at reasonable forecasts and planning and then decide what you can afford. I once worked for a company, um, I was a shareholder of a company and a board member and we just had the plan, well I didn't have the plan, the CEO had the plan of turning around that company just through innovation. Which obviously can't work because you know it's as if you're telling somebody um, I, um, well, what, 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 what can you say? You could say, for example, uh, I've got cancer, so just take some plants or whatever. 
that is not the right way to address a turnaround situation and we completely underestimated first of all the size of the overheads and secondly there was not the execution discipline the execute the executive executive discipline to cut the costs to a minimum not to forget innovation though but to cut, cut the costs to a minimum so that the bottom line would be a black zero or red zero in no time so please 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 when you're building up your companies now that you're growing have a close 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 look on your sales general and administration because the death of a company is there another example is a many many years ago I was the managing director of a subsidiary of a large uh, international corporate in Spain and there I knew at a certain point in time during the financial year that you know the numbers are not going to change a lot you know the revenue forecast was pretty stable and revenues come later than you expect them anyway um, we could not do too much about the margins at that time we improved the margins but we would have to cut sales general administration and guess what 80% or 90% of my SGNA was just something that was allocated from the major shareholder from this big co corporate to my little company with 100 people so I couldn't do anything about it now that is probably not the most entrepreneurial scenario but it shows again that once you have the sales general and administration on your on your cost and on your uh, P&L it's very difficult sometimes to get rid of it especially if we're talking about human resources and you have to make these decisions and don't make them too late every time for example I, I can't remember one cost cutting measure that I for example implemented where I would have said I've done this early enough I was I've al always been too late or when I had to fire somebody from the job I was always too late you know do it earlier rather than later you will not regret it so that was the second second batch of the top 10 entrepreneur mistakes these mistakes please avoid them if you want to learn more about how to avoid this, these mistakes the life program that I have created teaches you the best tricks tips tools and methods to avoid the entrepreneur mistakes in just a few weeks so if you want to learn from it join the community subscribe to my channel if you like this give us a thumbs up and please share this video that was Armin L. Rao from A. Leonard Rao the entrepreneur's entrepreneur and don't forget lead yourself <laughs>